Hello, my name is Antonio Guimarães. I'm a PhD student at the University of Campinas, and I will present our work titled Revisiting the Functional Bootstrap in the FHG. So, a little bit of context. The current FHG schemes are capable of evaluating linear arithmetic circuits in very efficient ways. However, nonlinear functions are still a challenge for them, especially with high precision. Some to systems such as CKKS, they implement nonlinear functions using approximations, for example, Taylor, Fourier, and Jeff Chevy series. They achieve relatively good performance because we can evaluate them in batches using things like computations. However, if you need to evaluate functions with high precision, the cost of this approximation uh, would grow super linearly, uh, sometimes exponentially, and it could become prohibitive. KFHT, on the other hand, implements circuits using binary logic gates, which can implement basically any function at any desired precision. However, complex functions require a very large number of logic gates, which would affect performance. In this context, there is a new alternative approach called functional bootstrap, uh, which maintains basically the same versatility of binary logic gates, while being capable of implementing much more complex operations. Thus, they present a better performance. In this paper, we revisit this technique and we present new methods and optimizations for improving it, especially for high precision functions. Uh, I will start this presentation with a very brief overview of KFHT and its functional bootstrap. Then I will present our contributions and results. KFHT. KFHT is based uh, on the learn with errors problem, and it's basically an instantiation of the problems using elements in the real torus, which is the, the set of real numbers, module 1. Inside the representation, it's the numbers in this interval. In, it has three types of ciphertexts, and in this work we will use mostly the first two of them, that I will get in details in the next slides. TLWE sample. Um, it's a pair, A, B, where A is a vector of any scalars in the totals. It's sampled from a uniform distribution, and here we have an example with n equals 5. B is calculated using this equation, uh, where S is the secret key. Uh, KFHE uses binary secret. Here's an example. Um, e is uh, an error sampled from a Gaussian distribution with mean 0 and a standard deviation sigma. This sample here that we just generated is not encrypting anything, so we call it a sample of zero. To encrypt something, we just take the fresh sample of zero that we just generated and add the message to B. So in this example, we are adding 0 0.2, the message, to B, and we have the pair. To decrypt, we first calculate the face, which is message plus error. In this case, 0 0.23. Since we are working with exact computing, we need to round this space to some discretized space. In this case, we are rounding to multiples of 1 over 10. So we get the original message 0 0.2. So uh, the second type of ciphertext in TFHT, the TRLWE samples, uh, they are basically the same thing that I just explained with one major difference. Instead of scalars in the torus, each element is a polynomial in the torus, with coefficients in the torus. So, for example, uh, this is the message n, which is a polynomial with coefficients in the real torus. In this presentation, to avoid confusion, I will call the TLWE samples uh, scalar samples or scalar ciphertexts in the TRLWE samples, polynomial samples, or polynomial ciphertexts. Arithmetic additions and scalings can be performed directly. We simply add each element of the pair or multiply each element of the pair um, by an integer. TFHT does not support multiplications between ciphertexts. It relies on external products with other types of ciphertexts. 
Uh, in any case, the important thing to note is that the arithmetic operations increase there, and eventually it would affect significant bits of the message. If we want to continue the computation, uh, we would need to perform a bootstrap procedure which resets the error to some predefined amount. Building blocks of TFH, uh, the TFH uh, it has three main building blocks that are necessary for the bootstrap and that we use in this work. The first one is the key sweeping. It has several uses, such as sweeping keys and parameters. Uh, but the main one that we are using here is the packing of scalar samples in polynomial samples. For example, here we, here we have four scalar samples, uh, each one encrypting MI. And we can, using the, the, we can use the packing key switch to pack these four um, scalar samples in one polynomial sample. Uh, the sample extract does exactly the opposite, receives a polynomial sample and extracts the coefficient of some monomial. In the example, we are extracting the monomial of degree 0. The third building block in TFH is the blind rotate. It receives two inputs. Uh, ACC is a polynomial sample. C is a scalar sample. It rotates ACC based on the phase of C. So in this example, we have n equals 4, the phase of C is 0 0.25, so it will rotate ACC by multiplying it uh, by x to the power of 2. Uh, it will rotate two positions to the left. Uh, here we have the result. Uh, the monomials that were rotated back from the beginning are now negative because this multiplication occurs Modulo the 2NF psychotomic polynomial, so we have a nega cycle property. With these building blocks, we can define the bootstrap. Originally, TFH only works with Boolean values. Uh, it represents them as minus 1 over 4 or positive 1 over 4. The bootstrap receives two inputs ACC, uh, which is the polynomial sample, and C, which is a scalar sample to be bootstrapped. In this example, C represents a bit 1, so its phase should be 1 over 4, but let's say that for some reason the phase is 1 over 8, and we want to correct this error. What the bootstrap does is to rotate ACC based on the phase of C, using the value rotate, and then it extracts the constant value of rotated ACC. Basically, if the phase of C is something between minus 0 0.5 and 0, this multiplication will be to x um, to something between 0 and n. So, thanks to the negacycling property, as we saw here, the constant term becomes negative, and we have minus 1 over 4. Otherwise, the rotation amount is bigger than in. So it will rotate more than once and the constant term will be positive again. When extracting, we will have one of these two values, which is the expected values for Boolean values in TFHE. The functional bootstrap. The basic idea of the functional bootstrap is to evaluate a function within the bootstrap instead of just resetting the error. In TFH, the functional bootstrap evaluates lookup tables. Here we have an example. Um, we have the input or selector in this example 2. We have the lookup table itself, which is encoding the square function. And we have the output 4, which is the square of 2. Um, the functional bootstrap is pretty similar to the regular bootstrap. There are two main differences. First, we are no longer encrypting Boolean digits. We are encrypting integers in some base, base 4 in this example. And second, ACC is no longer a fixed polynomial. Um, it now encodes the lookup table that we want to evaluate. In this example, the lookup table has four slots, since we are working with base of 4. And each slot is mapped to a sequence of 256 monomials in ACC. 
The bootstrap algorithm is similar. We use the bind rotate to rotate ACC and the sample extract to extract the constant term. The process that is actually performing the lookup up here is the blind rotate. Uh, however, it rotates ACC based on the phase of C. This phase contains an error, which is scaled by 2n, and furthermore, uh, this value is rounded. So we have two sources of error in this rotation. In practice, let's say we want to work with a large base and we want to rotate uh, 100 positions in ACC. For these parameters, the bite rotate would actually rotate something between 70 and 130 positions. So this rotation is not precise at all. That's why we need to map each slot to a large sequence of monomials. And the lookup table needs to be relatively small compared to the size of the polynomials. We also need to add a precision offset to C so that the bind rotates ends exactly in the middle of the sequences. Another technique that we will use in this work is the multivalue bootstrap. The idea here is that we can evaluate many lookup tables with the same selector at once, which of course greatly improves performance. However, it also increases the error output uh, by s times q minus 1 squared times, where s is the input base and q is the output base. During this work, one of our contributions is showing how we can remove this square uh, power from the equation. So, the functional bootstrap is a great improvement compared to logic gates, but it still has some problems with high precision functions. Taking a few examples from the literature, we can see that the sign functions, which only requires one bit of precision, can be evaluated using a polynomial with 1024 coefficients. It takes just 13 milliseconds and the error rate is negligible. A 6 bits to 6 bit lookup table, on the other hand, requires a polynomial 16 times bigger and takes around one second to be evaluated. The error rate is also something that's not negligible. Basically, the problem here is that the execution time grows super linearly with n, and n grows super linearly with the desired precision. In this work, we introduced new methods to evaluate functions with high precision without increasing the parameters. So we can evaluate the 6-bit lookup table uh, with a polynomial of 1024 coefficients, and we achieve a much better error rate and a much better execution time. So uh, our contributions, we introduced two methods to combine multiple functional bootstraps so that we can evaluate large lookup tables without increasing the parameters of the crypto system. We present optimizations to the core procedures of our methods. And we perform a complete error analysis, including experimental validation of our two methods and optimizations. Uh, we also implement several common functions and compare our results with previous literature. The basic idea behind our two methods is to decompose the ciphertext in multiple samples and encode the function in several small lookup tables. There are two ways of combining them. In the chaining methods, the output of a lookup is used to create the selector of the next. In the three based methods, the output of lookup is used to create the next lookup table. The chaining uh, is a generalization of the integer comparison algorithm presented by Gors and others, and it can only evaluate functions following this definition. However, it presents a much better error variance than the other method. Uh, this definition doesn't help much when defining new functions, but we found a few families of functions that usually present very good results with this method. Mostly, they follow test logics, such as integer comparison, sign, and parrot, or carry-like logics, such as additions and multiplications. We will show results for an addition implemented with this method. The tree-based method, on the other hand, is capable of evaluating any function. 
In this example, we are evaluating eight bits in white in base 4. Instead of having a very big lookup table covering all these intervals, we have several small lookup tables. Each square in this image is a different one. Then uh, we evaluate all lookup tables in a row with the same selector. First, C0, which is the least significant digit. Uh, we get the results, we create new lookup tables, which we evaluate with the selector C1, the second um, least significant digit, and so on until we reach the end result. At first, this method would require an exponential number of functional bootstraps. However, all lookup tables in a row are evaluated with the same selector. So we can use the multi-value bootstrap to evaluate all of them at once with a single bootstrap. Then we have a linear number of bootstraps for any arbitrary function. This method also enables optimizations based on specific properties of the function. The sigmoid, for example, has two intervals that are almost constant values. And it also has one interval that is almost a linear function. We can replace all of them in the tree, reducing the number of lookup tables that we have to evaluate. This is the algorithm for this method, and here we see its two main building blocks, the multi-value bootstrap and the public key switch. We present optimizations for both. First, we present a specialized version of the packing key switch. And then we introduce a multi-value extract procedure, which allows ciphertext scaling with linear error growth. And therefore, it improves the error output variance of the multi-value bootstrap. The basic idea behind the key switching is to homomorphically calculate the phase. For packing scalar samples in polynomial sample, this is what we need to calculate. F is the packing function. And KS is the key switching key, which is basically an encryption of the key, the key itself. The most expensive part in this is this multiplication here between KS and the polynomial generated by the packing function. This method is capable of packing up to any samples. However, we just want to pack B samples, where B is our base. So, uh, this polynomial will have sequences of n over b repeated monomials. Instead of having these repetitions in this polynomial, we can pre-calculate them in the key switching key. In this way, the ks key becomes b times bigger, but the multiplication becomes n over b times faster and generates n over b fewer errors. In our parameters, n over b is 256, which is a very significant gain. The second building block optimization um, is the multi-value extract. The, this equation defines the error growth variance when performing arithmetic. Rho is the correlation between variables. When adding independent variables, we have a linear error growth. When scaling a variable, uh, multiplying it by an integer, uh, rho is 1, and the error growth is quadratic. The idea here is simple. Can we implement multiplications as sequences of additions of independent scalar samples? We can always implement scalings as sequences of additions. But how could we obtain independent samples? Well, uh, if we remember our lookup table encoding, each element of the table is mapped to a sequence of 256 monomials, and according to the independence heuristic, they should be and should remain independent after the bootstrap. So, uh, at first, what we could do is simply extract multiple samples of the polynomial. However, we noted that although the independence heuristic holds true for the Gaussian error from the encryption, uh, the error introduced by the approximated gadget decompositions of PFHT, which is a novel from PFHT, are not independent. Uh, we needed to increase the precision of the gadget decomposition from 20 to 25 bits so that we could achieve the result that we were looking for. Here we have uh, the multi-value 
extract with a linear error growth, while the direct scaling still has a quadratic error growth. So, uh, in general, the multi-value extract allows evaluating any ciphertext schemes with linear error growth, provided that we had executed a bootstrap recently, which is almost always the case with TFAG. In the multi-value bootstrap of Karpov and others, this square comes from a, a ciphertext scaling. So we can just apply the multi-value extract here and reduce the error growth variance from quadratic to linear, removing this uh, square power. Finally, our results. We implemented several functions to compare with previous literature. We achieved gains of up to 3.2 times compared to works that were already using the functional bootstrap, and up to almost nine times compared to works using logic gates. I will highlight a few of these results. This is uh, a 6-bit six six lookup table. The, the difference between our method and the implementation of Karpov and others is that they use just one functional bootstrap with very big parameters, while we use several bootstrap with small parameters. We have gains in basically all aspects. The keys are smaller, um, the error H is also much smaller, and in the execution time, we got gains of up to 2.5 times. 32 bits interior comparison. We compare our work with the one of Bars and others, uh, which was the base for our chaining methods and that uses the same number of functional bootstraps. However, we are still able to get a 3.2 times speed up over it. Uh, as a result of our improved error analysis, which allowed us to get a much better parameter set. We also compare with the work of Zoe and others, which uses logic gates. We consider the error rate for logic gates to be negligible because it exceeds the precision of our estimations, which was uh, 500 bits. Uh, however, this value here is also negligible compared to the secret lab. 8-bit additions, uh, we implemented this algorithm using the chaining method and we compare it with works using logic gates. The algorithm is linear in precision, so we can have an execution time of uh, approximately 10 milliseconds per bit for integers of inside. For example, we could add integers of uh, 100 bits in just one second. Our gains here uh, reach almost nine times. And these two values are also negligible com compared to the security level. Okay, to briefly summarize our work, we presented two methods for combining multiple functional bootstraps, and we achieved gains of almost nine times over previous literature. Uh, our methods also enable the possibility of efficiently implementing functions with even higher precision. And uh, we presented building block optimizations, which uh, are, are made for our methods, but also can be used in other contexts. We showed a specialized packing key switching, which for our parameters is 256 times faster and presents less error over the generic technique. We also present a multi-value extract procedure which enables scaling with linear error growth. And we present a complete error analysis included in experimental validation. In general, the functional bootstrap is still a new technique, and, but it looks very promising. There is a lot of space for improvements on many of the techniques that we presented here. Thank you all for watching this video.